Hi and welcome to my shop. I'm going to be checking out this Stark Model 10A RF signal generator and finding out if it works or what might have to be done to it to, to make it work. So I'm going to be assessing it. So a kindly person gave me this and uh, he himself knew nothing about uh, it, whether it operated or not. So we're going to look it over and uh, decide if we should risk plugging it in here. So let's just take a look at the different controls that are on this. Stark Signal Generator, made in Canada by Stark Electronic Instruments Limited. Serial number 30 volt amps max, about 30 watts then, 25 or 60 cycles. 10 ARF signal generator. Just go through the controls. Here's the on off switch and the light to indicate it. Output selector, audio. Oh, it does audio. Pure RF. Modulated RF. It's a multiplier. It's a, a vernier for output. Band selector here with lots of settings. RF off, AF on, so this is where you would set it for audio. And it has quite a few ranges here 95 to 230 kilocycles, 230, 600, 600, 1600, so that, that's the AM band right there. And a number of, I guess we could call them short wave bands up to 4.4, up to 12, up to 30. Wow, up to 72, up to 144. This guy goes pretty high. So, uh, multiplier times 1, times 10, times 10,000. But no indication of what the output would actually be. The output level. Great big dial. Big knob. Looks like it's not gear driven, looks like it's direct. Oh, this is very difficult to turn. Something something not so good about this. Ooh. Feels like it's slipping. You know, I would imagine this would be a gear driven. Oh look, there's the knob. Here we are. Okay, this is a little better. <laughs> Did you see that? I didn't see it though just now. So what's with this big dial here? This just must be the fast way to get things done. This is for a little more precision. So if we take a look at the audio range, where is G1, G2? This is G, G1 and G2. One, one setting over here for the, for the G band. 72 and 144, 70 and 140. So I think what you're really looking at is a second har a harmonic. So it's really running from 70 from actually it starts over here from 30 to 72, but there'll be a harmonic coming along with it. So I think that's how they sneak their way up to 144. Yeah, 144. So what's the audio uh, part of this? Turn this around has the stopper. Um, well, perhaps the audio is a fixed frequency, like 400 or 1,000 or something like that. Some fancy designs here. Not sure what all that means. Must have had an artist on staff when they were designing this. Well, there's not much more to see, I don't think. Let's take a look at the power cord here. So this is very rubbery, a little stiff. But, uh, so I'm looking to see if there's any serious cracks in it, exposing the conductor. 
definitely it's definitely some, some more superficial cracks. Looks good. Okay, two prong unpolarized plug. Gotta wonder what's inside. So no screws on the back, they're all on the front. So you can stick it. This is pretty heavy. You can put it in your shop. Uh, I could put it in my shop. If I wanted to take it apart, that cabinet could stay behind. I just pull the guts forward. I guess that's kind of the idea. Talking about pulling the guts forward, I think I'd rather look inside this before plugging it in. Here it comes. The cord is holding it. the first of more cabinetry. As you can imagine there's a great big capacitor in there. Well, there's more power cord to look at. Now it's fine here. Transformer here, filter capacitor there, probably a rectifier tube sitting there, and this is probably an oscillator tube, or maybe an amplifier tube big blob of solder here. Really rusty, really rusty. Very rusty. So I imagine there's a big capacitor in here, so all the parts are going to be over here, I think. capacitor is going down to the uh, cabinet and it's connected to one side. The plug is unpolarized so you could easily plug this guy in and have this be the hot wire and all you've got between the hot wire and yourself is this capacitor if you touch the cabinet. So a lot of old equipment is like that a two-prong plug system uh, is something you need to be concerned about. These old paper capacitors cannot be relied upon. Should we open up the big box? Should we open up the big box and look inside? Well, I guess that's something I would do sooner or later, so we might as well do it sooner. I would guess this is from the 1940s. Oh, look at that. There's another tube. Okay. We should look inside the box because sometimes there's money in there. No, there's no money in the box. So we have the coils and we have what are, I assume, adjustable capacitors here for some kind of alignment. We've got coil here and, and another loop kind of looped in through it. I don't want to touch any of that or change any of it because it's probably critical for operation. Um, yeah, not a lot of parts. I've got a, a couple of uh, what would probably be just fine capacitors, but this one probably not. Probably needs to be changed. Tuning capacitor is disappointingly ordinary. I was expecting a great big gigantic thing in here, but no. It's got two sections. And that's about it. So we got one, two, three capacitors. I don't think there's anything else here to be terribly concerned about. Okay, I'm going to replace those three capacitors and then we're going to give this guy a go. Let's test these capacitors I took out. I, I like to test the 
capacitors I took out, here they are. They give some kind of judgment about their condition. I don't like to just assume, you know, that they're bad. I just did a radio where I left most of the capacitors like this in after taking a couple out and finding them to test really very, very good. Plus, the radio is working really good. I really don't like to do unnecessary work, so that's a 0.01. So what we're going to do here is we're going to apply some voltage across the capacitor. If the capacitor is leaky, this eye will not reopen once I start the test. See how it's open right now at the bottom? Here we go. Well, that's a piece of crap. That's a piece of crap. Okay, uh, chances are they're all the same. You saw the amount of rust inside that. Uh, you know, humidity inside these is, is a death knell. Here we go. That's a piece of crap. So this is not a uh, quantitative test here. It's just qualitative. But I know from experience in doing lots of capacitors, 50 volt setting, yeah, it says 25 there if you can read it, but it's actually 50 volts. If you can't take that, it's bad. Like if it doesn't open on 50, it's it's in the it's in the bad category. Okay, here we go. This is a molded one. Is it any better? A little wee bit. But if I crank this up to 150, it'll never open. So not quite as bad. It's in fairly good condition. So looking along the seam and, and where the wires come out. Doesn't seem to be gapped. But junk. Anyway, there's some of its cousins from another, another device. Okay, so I have the new ones in. Uh, one is out of sight back here. The other two are out of sight back there. So I think I'm going to put the boxes back on. Wait a minute. Where did this come from? Did I just test the wrong capacitor there? That's odd. Um, I'm pretty sure this came out of it. Okay, I must have grabbed another capacitor off my bench that I must have had laying around. Let's check this one. Fifty volts. What do you say? It opened part way. So yeah, it's a worse looking one. It's working slightly better, but still in the garbage can category. A brand new capacitor on that tester. That was fifty volts. They can put uh, four hundred and fifty volts on a brand new capacitor, and that that aisle open just like that. So uh, relatively speaking, those guys are pretty leaky. The one that would be leaking that we would worry about is the one that was connected to the chassis here. That would allow more current to flow, and if I were to literally plug it in the unfortunate way, because it's a non-polarized plug, put my hand on this, and then stick my foot on the floor, well, that might be the last video segment I ever shoot. I don't want that to happen. Okay, so I'm going to put the boxes back on, and then we're going to give it a go. Or should I even bother with the boxes at this point? Maybe not, because it's got two it's got tubes here. Oh this one's the only one that's in a box. I should put the box on here, because this 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 part probably needs its box. It's probably terribly uncomfortable when it's outside of its box. And there are cutouts for the uh, cables to go through. Nice sharp edged knife like things. Okay, I don't want to disturb that coil I saw. I can put the box on and maybe just stick one, one screw in for the time being. So this will attack my fingers for sure. Very snug fit. So you, you, you saw I mentioned I have white powder on my fingers, which I do again, and I washed it off. Um, I'm not too concerned about this white powder, but on some equipment, especially military equipment, they put an anti-corrosion 
coating on the top of metal parts. It's usually a greenish color. And that goes powdery. And uh, that stuff is, is I believe, uh, poisonous. So another gang, if this is the first video of mine you've ever watched, just beware that I say stuff that's not true sometimes. We'll put one screw in just to make sure there's an electrical contact here, but wow, I can't imagine there isn't. One screw just in case. Okay, now we're going to flip this up. Don't think it needs to be back in its cabinet necessarily, but that might be a good thing to do with it. Or lay it right on right on the surface and carry on or let it sit on this edge we can, we can do that oh it's upside down oh my gosh they've built it upside down no it isn't that's upside down made in Canada <laughs> I'm upside down this will work like this okay need to do a little bit of setup here to do a proper test on it now and wash my hands again Okay, so what you're looking at now is an SDR radio uh, that I use in my shop here, like it's a test instrument. And uh, so uh, you can see the number 2,000, 2, 2 million written at the top there. That's what that red line in the center of the screen represents, this one here. So, uh, but it's showing frequencies all the way from 1.2 all the way up to 3 megahertz. So we're going to start fairly low with it. And... Uh, let me just switch here. Okay, you can see the uh, radio image down in, in the lower uh, right now. Um, the antenna for the SDR is uh, at the end of this clip. I touch this red deal. SDR is just a little slow because it's a computer thing, it's processing. So we're going to put that on the bench here. Now I have a cord. I think these are called Amphenol, are they not? I'm going to put this into the output. I have not plugged this in yet. Okay, we're going to tighten that up. Good. And rather than uh, connect this directly to my SDR radio, it's a radio, right? So, it, you know, it's very sensitive. So I'm just going to put these in close proximity to each other. And the way I'll do that is I'll just clip this here. Clip it on the insulation. And hopefully not lose track of it. It's kind of a stiff cord here. Let me lay it way over here. That's good. So hopefully that'll show up on the SDR once we get this going, if we get this going. Now, practice session. We will want this on pure RF, I guess, to start. We'll dial up I'm, I'm around 2 megahertz, so we'll pick this 1.6 to 4.4. We'll turn the output down to number 1, and we'll leave the multiplier at 1 to start. That would, that would sound like a very, very low output signal to start. Maybe too low for my SDR. Okay, I think we're ready. Now, uh, in my shop here, I'm not going to go into details about it, but I do have arrangements done so two things are safe about doing this kind of thing uh, one is uh, this is plugged it's going to be plugged into an isolation transformer so the fact that it's an unpolarized plug and the issue about the case voltage not critical as long as I don't connect any equipment to it all the equipment in my shop is solidly grounded to the uh, power system neutral in my house but not this. This is uh, essentially floating. We can think of it that way. And is there anything else I haven't got right? And the, everything else looks good. Well, we should dial this. So we're going to want to get around 2. So that's a 1.6 to 4 or the D. The D. Now you got to read this upside down. So 2, 2. That's 2. And uh, that's where the red line is. So we'll put this right on too. We'll see what happens. 
Okay, so the other thing about uh, the safe starting up of old equipment is what if there's a dead short in this thing? Um, so I use a dim bulb system. If you watch my videos, you know all this, so don't listen. But you can see a couple of lights back here. The idea is uh, when I first turn the power on, I'm going to send it through those lights to the bench plug. And uh, if there's a short, then those lights are going to come on fully bright. They're going to stay that way. This thing will probably come on. The lights will, will come on to some degree. Then they'll go, you know, this is only a 30 watt machine, so I'm going to undo one bulb here. If everything looks okay, if this light comes on and then dulls down and, 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 and looks good, then I'll just flip my switch lever here up and we'll have 117 volts on there. Got to keep the camera here for now so we can watch the light. The excitement of the light is not that I don't put my arm right in front like that. Okay, turn on the master power. Switch is off on the machine. That's how the first thing we want to do. So we're going to flip it on. There is now power on that plug. 112 volts. I'm going to turn this down just a wee bit. 115. That's kind of typical. Okay. Now we're going to turn the power off. Turn it on the switch down here. I'm going to turn the power up here. That's because I can run faster with my hand up here if I have to. Here we go. Light comes on and it's dulling down. So that's normal. The red pilot light has come on. We can come over here now. So I'm going to leave that light in the circuit. The light has hardly got a glow on the filament. It's not dropping much voltage. We're at 90, 91 going down, 88, 86. This is, the tubes are starting to conduct. It's drawing more current. The a little light bulb back there is just a wee bit redder. It's a fairly low voltage, uh, probably too low. 87, 88. Did anything happen on our SDR? I wasn't even watching. Now, all those peaks you see on the SDR, let's go on the better, better screen here. Full, full, full screen this. All those peaks you see are noise signals here in my house. It's right there. You can see where the AM band is over here. And look at that. It's just full of crap. Um, yeah, too bad. Can't do anything really about it. But hopefully the signal coming out of the signal generator will be much greater than that. Uh, now keep your eye right around the red line. I'm going to vary the frequency of the signal generator a little bit. I don't see anything moving anywhere on the screen. Okay, so so far no output. I'm going to switch back to the other screen here. I guess I should say other view. Okay, we're going to crank up the output level and watch the SDR, see if anything shows up. We'll, 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 we'll go right from here. I could have sworn I heard something. My imagination. Okay, now we're going to take the multiplier and we're going to put it right up at the top of this at zero. Watch it, watching again, the SDR. Anybody home? Any signal showing? These are large jumps. Okay, it does say zero here. Let's turn this up. Well, I'd say I see nothing. We'll vary the frequency a little bit. It could be the output of this thing is actually quite low, and the way I've connected it over here is just—it's just not enough. I'm going to get myself a capacitor. Okay, and we're going to connect the output directly to the SDR, but not both leads, just one lead. Okay, and I clip this on. Let's go down, 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 down. Okay, 
Gotta be very careful here about holding various things at the same time. I shouldn't do that. Okay. Let me try again. Anything show? Ooh. Did, was there a big change? I wasn't watching the SDR. Let me look again. And to some degree, what I'm doing is I'm just adding more antenna to the SDR. So it's picking up the noises even better. Can you? Can this thing fight its way through that? Okay. Sure now, of course, the frequency could be way off on this thing. Nothing showing up. Okay, let's try this. Here we go. Something, anything. Nothing. Not a, not a, okay, right to the top. Give okay, it the full Monty here. Okay, with the output up full. Oh, I see it. Right, right near the red, right on the red line. Can you see it there? I'm going to switch to the full screen view of the SDR again. Okay, so look right in here. Not, not way up here. Just right in around here. And it won't vary the frequency. See him running around in there? He's having a hard time. He's having a hard time. But it's there. It's very low signal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the output. Let's try the multiplier first. Yeah, I pretty much got rid of it. Just about. Reducing the output. Reducing the vernier control too. Now I'm going to join the SDR ground wire and the ground wire of the device and explode. You can see that reduce the amount of uh, just general interference. You can see it on the waterfall display. Okay, so on the lowest multiplier, the times one, upping the output power, varying the frequency. Oh yeah, there it is. Okay, well. Now, I'm going to set the machine so it says 2. It says 2. And the actual frequency is very close. We, we can measure it on the SDR here if I just click like that. It's about 2. Wow, that's within like a percent or two. Wow. Okay, let's go up in the quiet zone here, up around 2.6 just putting the red line there so I don't lose my way 2.6 so we'll go to 2.6 well, that's quite a ways on this dial I will stop right at 2.6 there look at that it's right on top wow who'd have thought eh? that's incredible I'll go to the other screen here. That's really surprising. We're on times one and ten, so it's ten. <laughs> ten something. Let's let's knock this down. You know what? I, can you see it there? It didn't knock down getting no knockage. Let me move it off the red line a little bit. You can see it. This control, maybe it's just dirty, but not making much difference. So let's take the times 10. We'll go up here. Times 10. Times 100. So now what, what, it, it's a shaky output. This is a dirty switch. So the SDR may, instead of showing a higher line, the noise level may go down because it has its own automatic volume control, automatic level control. Let's go up another chunk. Yeah, I think we, we got we got here. We have a problem with dirt. Notice the frequency is not jumping around though. That's uh, that's pretty good. Let's go right to the very top. Okay, again, so you can see. Uh, a heck of a problem here with dirt in the switch. 
Okay, why don't we go up to a nice high frequency? We can go up to uh, we'll go this 12 to 30. Let's watch what happens on the SDR. It just disappeared. You can see on the waterfall that it disappeared. 12 to 30, which is F. F is right here. Where are we going to dial in 15? I just want to keep turning this big knob. So that's 15 megahertz. Okay, we'll leave this up here. Now I'll retune the SDR to 15. You have to click these numbers here. There it is. How would you want to bet? That's our guy right there. Okay, vary the frequency a little bit. Okay, that was a bad bet. That's not our guy. 15 is actually here in the middle. And now, could you, uh, now let me turn up the output. Could be it's way off, it's just off on the screen. Got have dirty switches here. Okay, I'm going to vary this around a bit. Are we sure we're on the right thing? F, F, 30, got to be. Because it's going down, 30, 29, 15. Actually, we're up around we're close to 16 now. Okay, just dialing this around. I don't think it wants to oscillate up here. Don't find it anywhere. Could just be dirty switches though. Let's go up. Where are we here? We're, we're going down actually now. 13. Yeah, I don't see much happening. Go down one band. This is a uh, four to twelve. So we'll, we'll dial in, let's say, uh, ten. Ten. There's ten. This is probably a short wave signal. I don't know what that is. Let's just turn the sound on. I don't know what that is. Something sticking there. Maybe it's this. Because we're, where are we? So we're on the 12. We'll be here. We're around 6 on here. 7, 8, 9. We're coming into 9. We got this cranked up full. Well, just lucky. Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay, so if we set it right on 10. This is where 10 is, right here. And now we read it. 10.1. Maybe, yeah, that's 10.1. Very good. How about this? Does this control do anything yet? Seem to this guy. Oh my, what just happened there? Oh, we're getting a super signal. Yeah, this is just dirt on this switch. Okay, let's try the modulation. Now we got a whopper of a signal there. Does this work now? So just do a lot of dirt in these controls. Everybody gets stable. Okay, I gotta tune the SDR. Wow, it's just going all over the place here in terms of signal strength. Turn on the sound. Hear a big hum? No. It's an interesting sound. Lightning sound. Probably the switch. Let's touch it a bit and listen. Or is it this? No, it's not, not this guy. It's this guy. Well, easy to clean that up and solve that problem. Okay, so we're listening to it on my SDR. The SDR is set to amplitude modulation. 
wait a minute, this has just tuned itself off here a bit. Okay, hear it drifting a bit. If I put this on, let's say, uh, low upper, upper side band, let's try CW. Okay, it sounds like we're in a submarine when I run it this way. Let me, let me use this dial. This is on pure RF, but because it's on CW, it okay, we'll go back to AM. We'll turn it on. <laughs> Poor guy. Oh, he's old. Okay, we're gonna flip it over to modulation. Take the volume down. I'm not sure why we're hearing a tone right now. Maybe one of these others is a little less. We shouldn't hear the tone unless it's interfering with another signal that's here in the shop. Okay, we're tuned out a little bit. Something's not moving at times. There we are. Modulation. The SDR is a little late, so I can flip the switch and it takes a second for the SDR to catch up. Did it change frequency again? Yes, it did. That's pretty lovely. Lots of interesting shapes on the SDR uh, waterfall. So now, what is all that? Uh, that's a good question. They're all joining together now. They're all they're going to get together right here. I think that's an artifact of the SDR itself. Uh, it has, I mean, the waterfall has multiple things that you can see. So I'm not quite sure why it does this, but it does. I don't think it has anything to do with this. this perhaps this is overloading the SDR. Go down. Now it's quite low. Let's see if we still get those funny shapes. We do not. So I think we could attribute the funny stuff going on to overloading the SDR. This is an, an, an called an RTL SDR. And it was originally designed so people could plug a small uh, key into their computers and this SDR radio, RTL SDR radio, would pick up television. But guess what? The television's kind of gone away in that respect. But other people figured out that they could take that SDR. SDR stands for Software Defined Radio. So the radio's operation is defined by software. Chances are you know all this. And uh, through clever development of software, they turned the television receiver into a general radio receiver. And they are a ton of fun. Dirt cheap and a ton of fun. A ton of fun to use. Okay, is there anything else here to check out? I don't think so. Just got to clean up those switches. And this guy is uh, probably not going to find a place in my shop for regular use. Maybe, maybe I should uh, I should stop. I'll do the switch cleaning and whatnot, and we'll see we'll see if it just kind of neatens everything up. Great. Okay, looks to me just taking out these screws should pop this top off. What's happening? This whole thing is loose. Not so good. Jeepers. This is bent. This is a bent sheet. Oh, we're going to bend it up. Okay. Can I see a switch in there?
shoot it everywhere. This is probably the one that was giving trouble. And I would quite commonly use just alcohol on this or good old WD-40. But because of the amount of corrosion inside here, I decided to use the supposedly better product here, deoxid. A lot of people swear by it, but I use WD-40 a lot for this kind of stuff. A little bit of lubrication on these switches isn't bad. Now, is there another switch hidden up in there that I just haven't seen? There's a, there's, oh my gosh, this looks like a, another box. Could have been this further. Who, you know what, there could be a whole switch segment in there wires. I don't want to bend this up. Oh, I can see, let's see. Let's, let's try the close-up camera and see if we can see our way in there. This, this may not be focused appropriately. Let's find out. What's in there? Well, I, I think they wouldn't put a copper box here without having something inside there. Okay, so we're going to blindly, yeah, blindly, here, now you're less blind, blindly spray this stuff in there. How am I going to get this to spray? Ah, like that. Okay, I'm not sure what I'm aiming at. Generally, you don't want to hear people say that. There we go. That's a big whack there. It's expensive. Th th this stuff is expensive. WD-40, not expensive. Water displacement formula number 40. Okay, hopefully that made a difference. I don't think I want to bend this down right now. We're going to leave it up in the air. The other thing was uh, the other two controls, which are only accessible in the box. You know, if I thought of it, I probably would have sprayed them ahead of time. But I do like to see how things work, or don't work, uh, before I start fiddling with them. Very, very much in favor of trying to power things up as soon as possible. As soon as reasonably possible. Tip this up. So I'm going to spray in where the leads are on this potentiometer. Because it's open there. Let me just get a better look at it. Boom. So open. Hmm. Well, how do you like that? So uh, most of these are kind of open where the terminals come out. Okay, while well, I ponder that situation, here's the other switch. Looks pretty good actually, but it's, I think it's made of a material that is uh, very, very uh, reliable. Didn't seem that way though, did it? under 
over here. I just touch it and I can I, I find this shoots a lot of gas. Hey, some people might say that about me. <laughs> okay, what to do about this volume control? Or uh, potentiometer, rather. Didn't seem to have any effect, did it? That's not normal. So, you know, there's a plastic part and a metal part, and I'm just looking for breaks, openings, gaps. Can I create a gap? No, not easily. Is there a hole over there? So one way to deal with this is to drill a hole in the back, but um, and I can drop metal pieces inside. So I'm going to do a Hail Mary on this. Give it a shot right in here. Did anything, but if it's that sealed up, it probably is okay. Why it doesn't seem to adjust the level, I don't know. Just looking at the resistors in here. Okay. This might bring the high frequency back in. Something else we should do. Let's time the WD-40. Lubricate this, especially, especially the uh, oh, there's some gears in there. Show it, tube. And, yeah, there is. There's a spring loaded clip right here. It's very hard to see. Okay, let's just turn this a little bit. I'm going to turn the big wheel. Now, this has a rim drive under the small wheel here. In behind the big plate is a small plate, a very thin plate. They're connected together. I, can, I think they're connected together right at this point. So if you move the thin plate in behind, you move the big plate too. This has a split. This has the need for a close-up camera. Because uh, you need to be careful with oil. With uh, where's the camera? Here it is. Okay, so we're looking up at it, right there. So this is a pinch pincher here, and pinching the plate. You can see it up in there. So when you turn this, well, this is really lousy. How come it's so loose? Really to goodness, the guys who, who designed this, they didn't expect this to be this loose. Well, I'm 
pushing it from underneath. What's going on under there? You throw a little oil on that. Is that thing loose? Just realize I gotta be a little bit careful with this guy. The, uh, all these coils are kind of sticking out here, and if I put this on the bench wrong, I'm going to kapow it. Um, right, oh, yeah, this is the part here. Put just a wee bit of WD-40 right in here. And we've got uh, up here too. Where? Sound terrible and feel terrible pretty much no matter what I do. Let's get more bearings here. Yeah. So you would not want to get oil or grease or anything on the uh, is upside now it is up no it's right side up again <laughs> um, you want to get oil on that uh, gripping part this just seems really f it's just not the way you would think they would make it this big big dial can come off let's take the big dial off Strong screwdriver, this won't fit, will it? Oh, I think the screw is as loose as can be there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm about to put this right on the coil just as I was talking about. If I'm not careful now. Well, it must be rusted on. Okay, we're not going to force it off. There's not much advantage. Maybe it's loose because somebody else did this. We left it loose. Oh, a little bit musical. Very good. Very good. Okay, let's put this out of the way around so I don't have the coils exposed to danger. Now it is upside down. Now the cord is on the coils. One way or another, I'm going to bust them. Okay, so there's probably an alignment thing that needs to be done, but it sure, sure seems pretty accurate. And you can see I don't have to depend. Hey, this is partially out. I don't have to depend on the uh, unit itself. I, I, I have frequency counters, and the SDR is a great tool for uh, keeping track of things like that. I'm going to put it back together, test it again, I'm going to wash my hands. Okay, I think we're ready for another test. SDR is around 10 megahertz. We'll start there. Um, I've left the uh, unpolarized plug on there, so if this were to leave me, I would change it and put a polarized plug on, even though that might not guarantee, I think it probably would guarantee safety with this. I did that. For now, it's going in an isolation transformer. Here we go. No, we don't. Let my app on the SDR there. Let's just turn the power off again. I must have bumped it or something. Didn't I? Funny coincidences. Here we go. 
put it on pure RF. I never checked the audio side of this, but that's okay. It only makes one tone. I have a nice audio signal generator right here. And here. There's probably more in here if I look hard. <laughs> okay. Did it already come up with a signal? So where are we left here? We're at zero, and we're at times one, and we're RF off. Well, that's, that's, that's not going to work. we got to get up to 4 to 12. I think I see it there. Change the frequency a bit. No, I don't know what I saw. The actual number we're dialed into, 4 to 12 would be 7. Let's go up closer to 10. There it is. Okay, we'll swing this right in on 10. And we'll read this. Okay, it's pretty much the same. 10.15 is what it's at. Very close. How about this? Doesn't seem to do a thing. Okay, okay let's try the multiplier. Yep, yeah, something's going on there. Overloading the SDR is what's going on. Very good. Very good. Now let's go up. See if we can get a higher frequency out of it. We're on F, 12 to 30. I'll dial in 15 on the SDR. There we are. The red line is at 15. And some very odd signals in there on the, on the SDR. Something odd here, something quite odd here. This is a little odd. Oh, no, I don't know what they are. Not from this. So, 15. We will find 15 right over here. Did I get there? 15. Here we come. Hello, anybody home? Hello. Yeah. So the SDR doesn't respond well to uh, varying frequencies. So we just dial this like this. Okay, that's about 15. What it actually says is 14.6. So it's not actually that bad. It's not that bad. Can we go higher? We can, but I have to make some changes to the SDR to do it. Let's try it. We'll try this one anyway, 30 to 72. Now I have to change the SDR settings from direct sampling Q brands to, to quadrature sampling. And I'm going to run this up to 30. Now that band starts at 30, doesn't it? So we'll put it up around 40. I have to change. This is the thing about the particular SDR I have has two antenna inputs, and one below 30 and one above. So I have to actually move the antenna. Bit of a hassle. Okay, here we go. So we're on the 30. That's this inside one. The number 30 is right there. Oh no, we're at 40. The number 40 is right there. Are you there now? Hello? Hello? I don't think I saw it. I'm at 45 now. We're going to put this up, 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 up. Keep it to works. Did something on the SDR, didn't it? 40. 40 down here. Hello, 40. Well, doesn't seem to want to show. We're connected. Oh. So something's popped up at 40.7 when we're on the 12 scale. I'm sure it's from here. So that's that's a uh, going to be a uh, harmonic. So we'll put this right on the 40 mark best we can. Okay, that's good enough. And what are we actually dialed into? 20. We dial into 20, 
we get an additional 40. Probably get a 60, an 80, and a 100 out of there too. Very good. How about a little modulation? Just turn the speaker on here. Oh yeah, there it is. As you can see, it widened out on the SDR a little bit. The sideband trying to come up. Okay, there we are. The Stark Model 10A. Get one today. So thanks a lot for watching. Hope you got a kick out of that. And I'm off to cook dinner.